What's going on everybody? My name is Tyler and today is day number 31 of my 32 straight days previewing the 32 NFL teams ahead of the 2020 NFL season. That's right, after today we'll have one episode remaining. Just uno, which is weird to think about. But if you haven't watched the first 30 episodes, the link to the full playlist is down below in the description. And in today's episode, I'll be looking at the Tennessee Titans, who in 2019, it was kind of a tale of two seasons. In their first five games with Marcus Mariota, as their starting quarterback, the team went 2-3. and three. Then in Week 6, Ryan Tannehill took over as a starter, and the team went 7-4 and four in his final 11 games, finishing 9-7, and seven, making it to the AFC Championship game as a wild card team, taking down the three-seeded Patriots at home and the number one overall seed in the AFC, Baltimore Ravens, in the process, and having the lead against the Kansas City Chiefs, who went on to be eventual Super Bowl champions, it was just a dream season for Tennessee, and I think they carry a lot of that mojo into 2020. Tennessee and their fans have a lot to look forward to. Mariota is no longer on the roster. He was, I believe he signed in Oakland, or sorry, Las Vegas this offseason, if I'm not mistaken. Tannehill was signed to a long-term deal. Derrick Henry just led the league in rushing yards last season. It looks to be even better this coming season, projected to do so once again. And despite losing Jack Conklin on the offensive line and free agency, the Titans still look to have a really solid line to protect Tannehill and create holes for Henry. My one concern with Derrick Henry is the fact that he is a workhorse. The guy gets a boatload of touches. He's gotten it through his first few years. And the wear and tear in his body, I just don't know when it's going to catch up to him, whether it's this year or next year or even the year after that. I'm a little concerned. And also, he does not have as much of a role in the passing game as people probably would like. And he keeps saying to the media, I'm trying to get my coaches to let me have a more involved, be more involved in that part of the game. And he just hasn't been. So I think for me, this is one of those things where he could be involved in the passing game, but it's most likely just going to be a bunch of running up the middle. He makes plays with his legs in the running game. And that could be hurtful for him going forward. Looking at the passing game, however, AJ Brown showed that in his first season, he could be a top wide receiver in the NFL he is paired with Corey Davis and Adam Humphreys, two co nice complimentary pieces, neither of whom are number one guys and probably not even number two guys, but are complement nicely to Brown. They also got Jonu Smith, who looks to be a very solid piece at tight end, and they could use probably one more wide receiver, but that is not a major concern for me given the workhorse that Henry is if he continues that production. The defense for Tennessee is very intriguing with guys like Vic Beasley Jr., Rashawn Evans, Harold Landry III, Kevin Byard, Malcolm Butler, and Dory Jackson, among others. They can give opposing offenses fits this season. And given how wide open the AFC South is in the grand scheme of things, given the fact that the Houston Texans are coming back to the field somewhat, I guess you can say, um, this is the Titans' division, I think, to win. The AFC South doesn't project to be an extremely tough division, especially given the fact that the Jaguars don't look to be very good. The Colts, who knows what they're like. They seem like they're going to be a very volatile team this year. The Texans, that's probably the Titans' biggest uh, competition. And I think the Titans have the edge. So it's going to be on head coach Mike Vrabel to really just keep this team focused. He's shown the, how good of a coach he is. We've seen that as his time as head coach for the Titans. Now it's just going to be on him to make sure everyone stays on course. And if things do go awry for this team, you just got to roll with the punches. Just keep fighting every single day and everything will work out, at least in theory. Looking at the full Titan schedule, which will be down below in the description, as well as with my win-loss projections for this team this season, they start out week one at Denver, which I think is a tough, tough matchup. Uh, the Broncos project to be really good this coming season on the road. And I think just the passing game for the Titans just won't be able to match what the Broncos project to be. Sure, Henry will be able to run all over this defense most likely, but that's a lot to ask in the first week of the season, especially given the craziness of this offseason. Week 2 versus the Jaguars, Week 3 versus Minnesota at Minnesota, Week 4 versus Pittsburgh, Week 5 versus Buffalo, Week 6 versus Tennessee, or Houston. Five straight wins heading into their bye week. So I have the Titans actually entering their bye week 5-1, sitting really nicely into the season. Jacksonville doesn't project to be very good. Minnesota, this will be a nice matchup between a young running back in Henry versus another run running back, young running back in Dalvin Cook for Minnesota. So I think that will be one that a lot of people will watch to see who can make one final stop. Buffalo, although the Bills have a good offense and defense on paper, there's something about that team that I think can be susceptible 
to a just a dud of a game. I think there's it's kind of like there's a wide range with the Bills, and I think the Titans can take advantage of that. Week six versus Houston, this could be a game crucial for the division, obviously early on in the year. I do have Tennessee winning this one at home. Just a nice momentum to carry into their bye week. And after their bye week, I actually have them winning their next two games as well. Week eight versus Cincinnati or at Cincinnati, week nine versus the Bears. So seven straight wins for the Titans going from weeks two to nine. So they'll be seven and one entering the back half of their season. You couldn't ask for a better start. Week 10 versus Indianapolis. That's just, I think, is a loss, but that could be one of those games where the Titans could win or lose. It's just that's how unpredictable the AFC South is. Week 11 at Baltimore. This is the game I have circled on my calendar. I'm most excited for, most excited for ahead of this 2020 season simply because the Titans bounced the Ravens in the playoffs last year in Baltimore. A major upset. Derrick Henry had a monster game. Uh, and I think the Ravens are going to come out seeking revenge. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Ravens, although they win this game big, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they just come out headhunting, especially on Derrick Henry. Week 12 at Indianapolis, so I the, had the Titans bouncing back against going two straight losses against the Colts and the Ravens, bouncing back, winning that one, getting back on track. Uh, still, they'll only have three wa- losses to this point. Very nice. And then weeks 13, 14, 15. Three more wins, so that's four straight from week 12 to 15 against the Browns, Jaguars, and Lions. Jaguars and Lions don't predict to be very good. The Browns in week 13, the Titans beat the squad week one last year. Who says they can't do it again? They ran all over them. The defense had a great day against Baker Mayfield in that offense, and I wouldn't be surprised if that didn't happen again. Week 16 at Green Bay and week 17 at Houston. Two road games to close up the year is always very tough. So that's why I have the Titans dropping those final two games, finishing at 11-5, and five, that week 16 against Green Bay. That will be interesting because they're going to go on the road to Lambeau, and despite they're not being fans, it's probably going to be a cold game in December. They're going to have to rely heavily on Derrick Henry, and we'll see if the wear and tear starts to creep up for him late in the year, if maybe he's dealing it all year, or this is the game that really pushes him over the edge, I guess you could say. And then Week 17 at Houston. This will be a game that Houston will desperately want to win to make the playoffs. This, for the Titans, this game won't matter too much. Sure, they could finish 12-4, and four, but they're not going to get the uh, top top seed in the AFC. Not one of the top two because they lost to Baltimore already, the tiebreaker. So 12 and 11-5, and five, we're third in the AFC. Very respectable for a Titans team, improving on their record from last season. Five games the most looking forward to for the Titans. Week one against Denver. Just to see where this Titan team stacks up. They lost... Jarrell Casey to this Broncos squad. So who knows? Maybe Casey gives his new Broncos teammates some secrets. Like, hey, this is what they like to do when they pass. This is like what the, what they like to do when they run, et cetera, et cetera. So the Broncos could have a significant edge there. And also just being the first week of the year, we'll see what this Titans team did in the offseason. Week five against the Bills, two teams that are going to be fighting for seeding, most likely in the AFC playoff picture between the Bills and the Titans. So this will be a good one. Uh, Bills defense versus that Titans offense, I'm excited for. Week 11, I mentioned against the Ravens, the Ravens are going to be seeking revenge. It's without question. I wouldn't be surprised if this game had a little bit something extra added to it. Week 13 against the Browns. Similarly, the Browns will probably be seeking revenge for last season, but I think the Titans can handle the Browns a lot more than they can handle the Ravens. I just don't have a lot of faith in that Browns defense uh, to slow down Derrick Henry, and if they do, A.J. Brown and Ryan Tannehill could scorch this defense. This Browns defense. The short Browns offense can be great, but the Titans have a pretty good one as well on defense. Uh, and finally, Week 17 against the Texans. This game will be mean a lot for seeding, obviously. So should come down to the wire there in terms of who wins out. I do have the Texans winning, being the fact they're going to be on the road. And I, I'm on, honestly, for the Titans, I could see them going 13-3. I am not afraid to say that. Do I think it's going to happen? Heck no. I do think they can beat the Colts twice. I think they can beat the Broncos. Texans twice is going to be hard. Packers, uh, Ravens are also going to be difficult. But 11-5 I think is very respectful for this Titans team given the fact that I don't think they have a lot of expectations. I think a lot of people are thinking, oh, the Titans, they had a remarkable run last year in the AFC playoffs, but they're not going to shock the world here. It's still the Texans division to win, and maybe the Titans, they could snag it. I have a lot higher expectation for this Titans team. I think they can definitely 
vault themselves into the top three of the AFC, as obviously by my record predictions. But let me know what y'all think down below in the description, or in the comments, excuse me. Do, where do the Titans stack up here? Are they going to improve? Do they make it into that top three of the AFC standings? Do they win their division this year? Does Derrick Henry and Ryan Tannehill and that offense continue to carry this Titans team? Or do the Titans take a step back and we're just like, what the heck was 2019? Was that a fluke? Uh, let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. Next episode, the final episode of this series, we'll be talking about the Washington football team who had a very interesting offseason. So until then, thank you all so much for watching and have a great day.